we will begin in 10 seconds or so. All right. Page 295, let us begin. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 32. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. <clears throat> and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also reviled him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I uh, go through all the passion accounts Every year. I mean, um, normally on Palm Sunday we do Matthew's account, and then um, on Good Friday we do John's account. And so I, I'm just not as familiar with Mark. It, it's, it's one that I don't preach on. It's one that I don't deal with as much publicly. My, my reading is more private, and it does uh, work differently when you read something out loud. Just something for your own home devotions. Consider reading the text out loud. It, it resonates differently. Literally. Um, the, the irony of what goes on throughout the crucifixion is so deep. You, you have the mocking of the soldiers who really ought to be paying true homage and who come the last day will be for every knee shall bow and yet they don't see what's going on. And even then, the, the, the finest purple robe of, of our creation would not be befitting for Christ Jesus in terms of how uh, he should properly be arraigned. Yeah, uh, I think the uh, glowing white of the transfiguration tops the purple robe even. And then when you do get to the, the crucifixion, you have the, the people who pass by and deride him, wagging their heads, you who destroy the temple and rebuild in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Well, the point of the temple was never just, oh, I'm going to go save myself. It was always about God is going to save his people. And what is Jesus doing on the cross? He is saving his people. His goal to be on the cross is not to save himself. It's to save us. And they missed the point. The reason why Christ Jesus came to be our Lord and to be our Savior was for our good, not for his. And uh, John really spells this out. This is one of the things I really like about John's gospel. This is the uh, classic um, text for Christmas Day, John 1, 
14. The word became flesh and tabernacled, or dwelt among us. That word for tabernacle, for tent, for dwelt, is the same word for the tabernacle of the Old Testament, the, the, the temple. So yes, Jesus is the true temple. He's where the sacrifice takes place. He's where we go to and receive all the good gifts of God and are made holy, because that's what went on in the temple. You, you approached the temple, you were declared holy. You got to enjoy all the good things of God. And that's what Christ Jesus, and he's doing it right upon the cross for our good. And then you have the, the, the chief priest. He, he saved others. He cannot save himself. So ironic, the 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 idea that just because Jesus doesn't do something implies that he can't do something. It, it's a, a terrible fallacy. Um, just because I don't do something doesn't mean that I'm incapable of it. Christ was perfectly capable of coming down off the cross. It's just he knew that was not what was good. That was not what he came to do. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. They had seen so many things that that should have shown them, that should have revealed to them who Christ Jesus was, and yet they refused to believe. And when you get to the pinnacle, the whole point, the whole of the Old Testament pointed to the fact that the Messiah would suffer and die for the sake of his people. This is Isaiah 53 playing out right in front of you. This is, this is Genesis 3.15. This is his heel being bruised, crushing the head of the serpent. And when they see it, they don't get it. And it's the great tragic irony. But it's also something that we should expect because we confess and believe that that faith, that, that belief does not come by our, our own reason or strength, but is simply worked by the Holy Spirit. And that is a gift. And this is the, the thing that we should remember. We have been given the gift of faith. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to rightly hear the word. And that's true today, that's true, uh, however strange or bizarre things happen to be where we're at. And so we see the crucifixion, we see the cross for what it is, God's plan of salvation for us, God's rescue of us, God working and dying and then rising for us in our salvation. And it's a, a wonderful, beautiful, terrible, mind-boggling thing. And uh, may God bless you this year, especially as we're uh, a little bit more slow and, and stuck at home and not able to do all the uh, normal distractions that we get this time of year. May God bless you as you meditate upon his, his great love for you. With that, let us go on to our <clears throat> catechism lesson. We will go to page 325. 325, and we will go over the sacrament of holy baptism. The first question, what is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word, which is that word of God. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, can I comment on that very quickly? Um, I would translate that actual verse as, therefore, going and making, going, you will make disciples of all nations. This isn't a, oh, you better get up and go. It's, no, as you go, as you go about your life. This is, this is not a, you better get up and go somewhere. No, no, you can stay at home and still be made a disciple. <laughs> but, but it's just, as you go about doing your things, disciples, this is what's going to happen. You're going to make disciples by baptizing them, and you're going to teach them all the things that I taught you to remember. Well, I continue with the rest of the verse. But yeah, it, it's a great promise. God works. He builds the church through baptism. Beautiful stuff. All right. Second, what benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Third question, how can water do such great things? 
Certainly not just the water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things, along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Fourth, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam and us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Amen. This is our great confidence that we have as, as Christians. Yeah, there's pandemics going around. Yeah, there's fear. There always is. Sometimes we see it more, sometimes we don't. It's okay. We've died with Christ. We live with Christ. That's the reality of our life. And now we're simply free to go love. We are new men, new women in Christ. That's the great reality. Enjoy your baptism, folks. It still holds. Let us confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> On Thursday, we are instructed to pray for um, the church and our pastors, for uh, teachers, deaconesses, and other church workers, for missionaries, and for all who serve the church. For the fruitful and salutary use of the blessed sacrament of Christ's body and blood. So we'll pray the Lord's Prayer and then uh, pray for those things. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have sent workers into the field to bring in your harvest by the proclamation of the word and the instruction of all in the ways of the faith. We ask that you should bless all those who have been given the task to publicly teach, to publicly preach, for our teachers and for our deaconess and all other church workers, especially as they face these odd and strange times, Grant them wisdom and discernment that they might continue to faithfully proclaim the saving love and salvation that Christ Jesus has won for us. Heavenly Father, you know our needs. You know the struggles we have as sinful men. You know the, the realities of our physical bodies. For you have made us beings who eat and drink and enjoy things of taste and smell and sight and sound and touch. In this time when we are cut off from many of the, the interactions that we are used to, and when many of us are no longer able to receive the sacrament of your Son's body and blood. Preserve us in our faith. Increase our hunger for the sacrament. Remind us daily of our baptism so that we remain confident in you, even with the time we are able to be brought back together in your presence around your word and your sacrament. Heavenly Father, be with the doctors and nurses who are tending to this disease the workers who are, are studying it, to those who are trying to find cures and workarounds. Grant them your skill, your, bless them as, you, as they put their talents to use, that soon we might be able to once again gather. Be with those who are fighting this illness, who are suffering under its burden. If it is your will, restore them to health. 
Give them patience, give them comfort, especially those who are dying, that they might remember the love you have for them. Bless and protect those who carry this disease but do not know it. Give them wisdom and patience that they might safely remain where they are and curtail the spread of this plague. And be with us all. Heavenly Father, you know whatever else that we need, we commend it into your care, trusting your great love for us. For your Son, Christ Jesus, has died and risen for us, and you see us through him and see us with nothing but favor. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. One more thing before I go, because I was just thinking about it. Um, Mark's gospel, I, I contend, is written and preached and spoken to the church in Rome as it's facing persecution. And just thinking about our passage that we had today in the middle of prayers, it, it struck me how appropriate it is that they deal in Mark's gospel so often with the, the <clears throat> mocking and the government forcing Simon of Cyrene to do stuff and then mocking. If you're facing public persecution, what are you going to face? Mocking and people pushing you around. It's great comfort. Yeah, no, our, our Lord faced stuff down, and our Lord faced down the stuff we face today, too. He died, he rose, Jesus lives, the victory's won. Be at peace in him, y'all. Have a good day, stay safe, all that good stuff, and I will see you later. Bye.